Hi everyone, we're here today to talk to you about Netflix recommendation algorithms, and specifically SVD++. SVD++ originates from the Netflix challenge, which was when Netflix offered a million dollars to whomever could beat their algorithm at estimating what users will rate various TV shows and movies that they have not already seen by 10%. What this ended up doing was leading to an arms race between algorithms where SVD++ came out on top. Today we'll be looking at a new Netflix user, John. John has watched three movies, Avatar, Captain America, and Nomeo and Juliet, and has given a score to each. In addition, experts have rated each movie in terms of the genre it fits in. Action, romance, comedy, drama, and horror. However, now John wants to watch Star Wars, but he's not sure if he's going to like it. So we're going to use our recommendation engine to determine what rating we think he will give it at the, at the end of watching it. To start off with, we construct a matrix of users and movies. John being new to Netflix has only seen a few movies, and because the library of Netflix is so massive, not everyone can watch all the movies, of course. Thus, we create a sparse matrix, with only several values of the entire grid filled in. Our job is to complete the other um, cells in the grid. This is what the recommendation engine does. To start off with, we start with a baseline model, which only uses explicit data, ratings that have already been given, to construct it. We use three primary values, mu, b of u, and b of i. Together, they form bui, which is the rating given for a certain movie for a certain user. In order to get the average mu for all of Netflix's scores, what we need to do is we need to first sum all of the values, and then multiply them by the number of movies and some TV shows which are being rated, which in this case is 4. Once we get this, you get the mu value of 3.5 for the entire set. Next, let's solve for BU. So John, let's bring up John's scores again, and let's compare it to the mu 3.5. You can see the differences here are negative 1.5, 1.5, and 0.5 from the difference. Therefore, in order to solve for the BU, you sum the differences and divide by the number, which in this case gives us the value of 0.5. Solving for B of I is actually the simplest thing, simplest thing to solve for. All you have to do is subtract the average rating of Star Wars from the average of all movies in order to get to see how positive it is or negative it is when compared to the total, which in this case is 0.5 higher. So that was our baseline model, where you have the summation of mu plus bu plus bi. Plugging in the numbers we've solved for, we get 3.5 plus 0.5 plus 0.5, or a, a BUI of 4.5. However, this is not what we want in the end. What we want is a better model, which is why we have a first pass to try to improve these results. BUI now also takes into account how what the user likes and how it's similar to features in various movies. The similarity portion is QI transpose times P of U, with Q of I being movie features and P U of being user features. You can see a quick example of what we will be using for this on the bottom right corner now. So let's solve for QIT first, looking at Star Wars. So if we break it down, we can see approximately 0.8 of Star Wars is action, 0.1 is romance, 0.1 is drama, and 0 are comedy and horror apiece. PU is a user's interest in each type of theme. For now, it will be given to you as can be seen. However, if you wish to see how it's derived, you may look at our paper. So what did our first pass model come up with? Well, we, when we work it through, we sum the baseline model plus QI transpose times, times PU, or 4.5 plus 0.8, coming up with a rating of 5.3. However, this is still not what we're looking for, surprisingly. The reason why is that it's not matched back to what the user rated the movie. To do this, we need to look at the user's past history and adjust the algorithm from there. We do this by adding a summation of learning constants based on the user's history of scores. We also include a set of movies having been seen, NU. NU is a simple column vector with length equal to the number of movies in the library you're looking at. In our case, it's just four movies. Each of the corresponding elements corresponds to a movie, with giving it either a 1 if it's watched or a 0 if it has not been watched. Next, we need to come up with the normalization constants for each of the previously watched movies. This is to ensure the algorithm does not um, mess up explicit data. We do this by adding a constant to the end, which is the normalization constant. We do this for each movie. The calculations are a little long for this video, so we're go I'm going to just give them to you now. See the paper or ask us for more details about them. We now have all the data we need to make a proper rating that does not mess up the explicit 
user ratings they have already given. We do this by plugging it into the equation we showed you earlier. By iterating over the new learning constants and multiple, by using it as a scalar for the movie features, we get a, a vector of the same length as QI, which we can then transpose and dot to get us another value to add to our original baseline score. We end with a much more reasonable rating of 4.79, which when looking back at the data makes sense. John's pro user profile has a 0.9 preference for action movies, and Star Wars is a pretty action-heavy movie. We also know that Star Wars was well liked by the Netflix community, so its high score makes sense. Thanks for watching, and if you want to learn more details, please look at our paper or talk to us in person. Thanks.